Okay, before the video starts, let me roast some people that were in my comment section on my last video where I talked about Ken and Gen. Well, not really my last video, but you know, a video I made last week, essentially. And everyone in those comments and everyone on Twitter, because you know, I was shit posting on Twitter. Follow me there if you guys want to see some of that. But I was on there talking about how Ken and Gen just weren't good right now and how they were like helping Dark Worlds go first, which uh, by the way is not the problem of dark worlds i don't know if you guys know this but an ftk deck doesn't really need support going first and i think people lost their minds over that they were talking about how like oh ken and gen are gonna break the game they trigger talents they force you to use talents uh, this deck is gonna be tier zero it's gonna destroy ycs indie what how can you guys even say that and and now all you guys are quiet all of a sudden you know after the results come out Ain't no one telling me. See, told you so. Ain't no one, no, nobody's telling me that because all of you guys were wrong about Ken and Gen. I literally have been saying that, dude. Like, it's a card, it's a normal summon card that helps you going first. That is not the right support that a deck needs. It's a good card. It might help you going first even better, but it didn't solve any of your problems. I don't know, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, and this is just some advice out there for just anyone in general, whenever there's a deck that's like not as meta, and new cards get released for said deck, the only way that said deck can get better is if it fixes the problems that the deck originally has. For example, Rescue Ace, right? The problem was consistency. Sinful Spoils comes out, what does it fix? Consistency. You need something uh, that existed that wasn't good and had a flaw, and then something needs to come out that fixes that flaw. Ken and Gen did not do, do that, and I recognize that right away, and because I'm an experienced player, I understand how, you know, deck building works and, and theories work, I could just think of how a card would be good or not, straight up from my head, and I told you guys that, and y'all didn't believe me, because you guys just thought of the most craziest scenarios, like, what if I open 10 talents, and I went first every round, like, okay, the, you want the YCS, like, what do you mean? But anyways, that's not the topic of this video at all. I just wanted to get that out there because I didn't really know if I wanted to make that a separate video because it was just like a small rant that I had about people giving me shit about how Ken and Gen were going to be broken. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that in the beginning. But also, uh, not relevant to the video again, but like, you know, just whatever. Dude, how mad I got. I want this shit from... I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me see. Can you see it? No, it's not like fully in frame, but you guys can, can just see the, the full view. Essentially, I got this map. This is a world's map, by the way, from going to Master Duel. Like, you actually had to be at Master Duel Worlds to get it. And I believe it's a participation map from Master Duel, which is still a lot of money. I checked up on Card Market uh, earlier, you know, um, and it was like 400 or 700 euros, something like that. And, and that's pretty uh, insane because I won this from a Twitter sweepstakes giveaway. Basically, you know, those threads where it's like, oh, tag two friends and maybe you'll win. And, um, I somehow won, even though all I do is shit on uh, Konami on their Twitter. But um, somehow, um, they, you know, they got a soft spot for me. Either that or it was completely RNG, which is probably most likely what happened. Um, but yeah, cool. Cool, Matt. Just wanted to show that out and show that off out there. But all right, so let's dive into uh, today's uh, content. Actually, I wanted to talk about YCSs in established uh, formats, right? Because YCS Richmond is coming up. I know all this week I've been talking about YCS Indie, but let's go ahead and dive a little bit forward to next week because it is going to be a YCS in the same format. But uh, the number one thing that's going to change is that the format is now solved, right? And not necessarily solved in a sense that like we know what's correct and what's not, but it's at least way more predictable than it was prior to YCS Indie, right? So YCS Indie, we had no idea of what was going on, but I think now going into YCS Richmond, if you are not expecting to play Rescue Ace, you're pretty much crazy, right? Because it's like, it's on paper for you to expect to play Rescue Ace. So going into this format, I do think the RNG will be reduced by a lot, right? Because the rogue decks are going to go down by a large margin because the meta decks are now uh, going to have their place into this spot. Even though I do think in the format overall, people are still going to play their pet decks. It's not really going to change drastically, but I do think that because there's a meta that's established, uh, people will be you know more inclined to go to that um, to that to the best deck to speak, right? To play something more meta so they have the best chance of uh, doing well. So I do think for this event. Um, it's a little bit easier to make your tech uh, choices and things like that, right? So, if you guys didn't know, I actually 
have done the best at YCSs where the format has been established, right? I'm pretty much not that good at formats where it's completely brand new and I have to figure out solving it. Because, well, number one, I barely attend any of those uh, because I just can never get the cards in time. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to book this event because I'm in the West Coast and events only happen in the East Coast because Konami loves East Coast. Um, <laughs> but number two, I also, um, I do think one of my better qualities is playing, not actually building, even though I do think I'm good at both. Um, but uh, to pick one side over the other, I would say I'm better at playing rather than uh, building and, and theory, right? Uh, so with that in mind, I've always struggled at these type of events, but I do really, really like these established uh, formats, even though they could get a little bit boring and the surprise factor is indeed gone. Like, for example, I do not think Jeff Leonard's Exodia deck will ever live anymore past that YCS. At that YCS, it was still a debate whether people would play Droll and Lockbird or not. But I do think going to this event, everyone's going to play Droll just because of um, uh, Triff's deck, uh, the Manium deck, uh, being like, you know, obviously represented and and uh, tier limits being represented and all that type of stuff like you kind of have meta cards that you can um that are more established now than before right because before if you expected the meta to be purely in rescue ace maybe you just didn't even play draw in your deck but obviously now that you know manadium and uh, tier limits are a thing or like at least more popular you can actually uh, decide to main draw right and i know that's probably not the best example because everyone played draw already um, but that's just, uh, you know, you can apply it for like other cards um, as well, right? So I do think one thing that will be drastically different for this event over the YCS Indie is because I think the way you build your deck for YCS Indie, you have to play more generic cards that kind of hit everything. Uh, so for example, Ash, Imperm, and maybe like Effect Bailer were really, really good. And uh, Steven Santoli actually played all three of those uh, tech choices, right? And the thing is, while like those cards might not be the most impactful cards compared to like Nibiru or Joel Lockwood, they did something against everything, which is how you should build probably probably against these um against the meta where you don't know what anyone's playing right you want to pick the most generic cards even if they're lower impact they at least do something so you're not playing dead cards in your deck uh so that, you know when you draw your five card hand most likely if every card's live you're probably gonna have a good chance of winning right but i do think going to this event i do think you can be a little bit more specific with your tech choices now because now we know that rescue ace is leading my huge margin maybe nibiru in the main deck or even hot lightning storm for example in the main deck or even a uh, copy like super poly like i have uh on the front of you guys on the screen will be something more uh strong and more relevant right because if you go to an event now the likelihood that you play rescue ace is way higher than you would than you would have had uh have you went to ycs indie where it was a little bit more um you know under the not really under the radar but like there was no clear last event to like look at right um so i do think going to this event that's one thing that's going to change heavily and there's also a way to counter that as well right so if you know most people for this event are going to be on the beard lightning storms and things like that maybe decks like labyrinth and purely things that don't really get affected by those cards could have a good chance of doing well now because you know that most people are going to be targeting a certain different thing at YCS Indie people just threw in tech cards without even thinking about it they just threw in what they thought would be good and called it a day but I do think for Richmond people are going to decide to play more rescue ace targeted cards and that leaves a lot of uh, room for other decks um, that don't lose to those tech cards uh, to shine right so I just want to talk about that a little bit you know basically um, just how you use or how you build for an event that's unsolved versus solved so I do think going to this event guys I do think you should play cards like a Nibiru change things up and don't actually copy decks from YCS Indie into Richmond. I know they're the same format. People tend to have this idea that they can just net deck from the last event to the next event if the format didn't change and no new cards get released. But guys, you always want to be ahead of the meta. So like, remember uh, for this event to build for Rescue Ace and main those cards that are more impactful than you know just a simple Veiler. I don't think those cards can cut it for this event, but they could have cut it for Indie. Uh, but now I think the way that you want to win for a YCS is to play more high impact cards, like maybe even main deck draw, for example, if you're expecting a lot of Manadium and, and things like that, right? So that'll be it for this one quick short video i know i had like a rant in the beginning um but I, this video was going to be quick me just talking about my thoughts of ycs richmond and how you guys should prepare um for the event even though i kept it pretty brief but i hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you guys found it insightful and i'll catch you all in the next one